What's shaking, cocktail fans? I'm Modern Bar Cart CEO Eric Koslick, and I know what many of you might be thinking. Drinking on a boat? When am I ever gonna be drinking on a boat? Well, to those of you who have that question, I'd say maybe never with that attitude. But in this short video, we're gonna go over the five most important things you can do to maximize your pleasure and minimize the inconveniences of making cocktails out on the high seas. Let's go. Tip number one, safety first. You gotta be safe on your cocktail cruise, and that means, most importantly, the person driving the boat's gotta be sober. So unfortunately, Captain Pete, it's water for you, my friend. Also, keep in mind local ordinances. Uh, a lot of the time, wherever you're boating, there's gonna be rules about how many life jackets you need to have on board, where you can and cannot go, and how you operate while you're there. So it's important to follow those laws because if you get pulled over, unfortunately, your cocktail cruise is over. Finally, before you board the vessel, think about what you're gonna wear, especially if you're not used to being on a boat. Make sure you've got shoes that you're not gonna slip in, make sure that you're dressed appropriately for the sun or the cold, because at the end of the day, you're on the boat to have fun, and if you're not prepared, you might be caught off guard and be either too hot or too cold to enjoy your cocktail. And remember, if you don't boat safely, you could end up like this. Tip number two, pre-batch your cocktails. I love going out on a boat and bringing a pre-batched Negroni or Manhattan or margarita. People are always delighted when they reach into the cooler and there's a cocktail just ready and waiting for them. But let me tell you this, the one thing that most people forget when pre-batching cocktails is the dilution. Think about it, when you're making one single cocktail, you're diluting and chilling when you shake or stir over ice. But when you're making a whole batched cocktail, sometimes that's not an obvious step. So make sure that when you're pre-batching your cocktails, you put a dilution factor of 15 to 25% into your batching process. I usually like to go around 20% because it's easy math to do and it usually works out to a nice round ounce number when I'm pre-batching. Uh, so remember, always dilute your pre-batch cocktails. Now another thing to keep in mind is that when you're bringing cocktails on a boat, you're, you're not bringing your whole home bar with you, which means that any prep needs to happen before you hit the water. So if you wanna do any sort of mise en place, that needs to happen in advance. And one way that I like to make sure I'm not gonna forget anything or miss anything is to walk through the steps of making the cocktail in my head before I do anything. That's even before I go shopping for the ingredients. So I got the ingredients, I say, you know, do I need a certain vessel to carry these in? Do I need a certain type of measuring device for this? What kind of garnishes am I gonna need to bring? These are all questions that need to be answered before you do anything else. So walk through the cocktail in your head before you do any pre-batching. And again, I can't emphasize this enough, don't forget the dilution. Tip number three, assemble your mobile cocktail kit. Now, this is something that I've assembled over the course of several years. Uh, and so I figured what I'd do is I would just take you through my little mobile bar kit as we go here. So first off, of course, we've got a couple of different types of shaking tins, right? We've got a Boston shaker and a cobbler shaker in here. They just happen to fit really nicely together, okay? What else do we have? We've got a cutting board, which goes really well with our paring knife here in the front pocket. We've got a muddler. So if you're gonna be doing any muddled cocktails, this is very helpful. If you're gonna be doing those nice mojitos on the boat. Then I've got a couple of sets of strainers. I've got some nice mesh here, uh, a nut milk bag. If you ever need to do some straining on the road, like let's say you're visiting somebody for vacation, you wanna make a specific type of pre-batch cocktail, these nut milk bags are awesome. Now, we've also got our B-string 
citrus juicer. And what I mean by that, it's got a little crack in it. This guy's seen some, some serious action. So the nice citrus press is at home, but the B team gets to be in the mobile cocktail kit. We've got some stirring spoons. We've got our Hawthorne strainers so that we can strain things effectively. Uh, we've got our, of course, citrus peeler. We've got a spoon for stirring, ice scoop here if we need to scoop ice. And we've got a couple of different measuring apparatuses. Those are important if you're gonna be uh, custom making the cocktails. We've got our julep strainer in case that should be useful. And then we have here a tool that I really like on boats because it pulls double duty. Uh, this is just a classic old can opener. It's probably 40 years old. I got this from my grandfather. And one of the reasons why I like cocktail tools that pull double duty is that when you're a bartender on a boat, you gotta keep in mind that you are the second of two hosts. The primary host on the boat is the captain, and the captain is responsible for making sure that everyone's safe, everyone's well looked after, and that we get where we're going if we have a destination. And that's a hard job, it's really busy, there's always a lot to do as a captain. And so it's the bartender's job, whenever possible, to make the captain's life easier. So if that means being able to open someone's beer when the captain is busy steering the boat, it's great to have these tools that pull double duty and can solve problems that people who might not be drinking cocktails might encounter. So just remember that when you're assembling your mobile cocktail kit, see if you can throw in a few little odds and ends that pull double duty just like this can opener. Tip number four, keep track of your drinks, which means you gotta consider glassware. Now, if you're on a fancier cocktail cruise, you might want to pick up some nice plastic stemware like this. However, if you're drinking the same cocktails, you might want to invest in some drink charms. You know, those things that either sit on the, the rim of the glass or in the drink to kind of indicate whose cocktail it actually is. Now, if you're going for more of like canned or bottled drinks, I also find in the beer and wine department that different colors and patterns of koozies also help people keep their drinks straight. So if you're going for more of the beer and wine approach, don't get a set of matching koozies. Go for something that maybe has a little bit of variety. Now, when it comes to us making cocktails on the boat here, I like to uh, just keep it simple and go with a reusable solo cup that we can take home and kind of uh, just, just clean up in the, in the sink and then repurpose, right? So what I like to do is write some initials on it. So we've got A for Anna. Thank you so much. Yeah. You've got C for Carolyn. There's Carolyn's Negroni. And then, of course, we have HD, which stands for Handsome Devil, which I can only take to mean me. So there's my drink. So that's step number four. Keep your cocktails straight. Tip number five, create an atmosphere. Drinking should be fun. Boating should also be fun. So drinking on a boat should be twice as fun. So that means bust out your favorite patterned Hawaiian shirt, bust out the captain's hat, and of course, just remember that every good bar knows that the secret to create an atmosphere is selecting the right tunes for the job. So DJ Captain Pete, let us have music. They walked along the beach, they stopped at several raw bars where they slurped a dozen each. They bought a bunch of popcorn from the fat man on the dock. If you turn back pages, turn round the clock. Lola told Frank Thanks for watching this video, everybody. If you thought it was good, give us a like, give us a subscribe, leave us a comment. Uh, if you do get the chance to drink on a boat, I highly recommend it. And please be safe. But also, please enjoy the water, especially if it's a beautiful summer day like today. So, ladies, what do you say? Is it is it time to maybe get in the drink? Cart CEO Eric Goslick. Drink responsibly and experiment boldly.